Joining us now is retired Lieutenant General Keith Kellogg. He's also a former acting national security advisor and now a Fox News contributor. General, uh, Merry Christmas. Thank you so much for joining us uh, on, a, on this Christmas morning. Um, I really do see this as a national security risk. Um, not only are we having the drugs, the human trafficking, but we have people coming from more than 150 countries, and we have absolutely no idea who they are. It's just a matter of time until something really, really disastrous happens. But how do you see it? Yeah, Jason, first of all, Merry Christmas to you. And also, I've got to say up front, a Merry Christmas to uh, Pepper and Madison, uh, Alex and Luke, who are watching right now. They're my grandkids. So, uh, look, it is a national security threat, and it's a huge one. But I look at it just besides the numbers, and it, it's the way it's being handled. It's actually being handled by being ignored. And how it was done in the previous administration with President Trump is you've got to get the, the Mexicans involved because they're coming through their border. And what the president would do is the president picked up and called Obrador, and he basically said, this is your problem, too. And he put a lot of pressure on him. He basically said, look, if you can't solve this problem in Mexico, we're going to solve this problem. There were, talks, there were actually comments about us using some type of force into Mexico, which was true, primarily against the cartels. But as a result of that, Obrador put over 25,000 Mexican troops on the border, preventing them from coming across. Because right now, the border is porous. The local communities cannot handle the influx, and we don't know who's coming across because they're not being tracked. And if you talk about a, a security threat, look, you go through TSA, you go through an airport, they secure you. Nobody's securing anything on the border right now. So do I consider it a threat? Yeah. But I think it's more than that, and I think the president has to pick up the phone. He's got to call Obrador. He's got to say, look, all of Mexico is is a superhighway for those people coming across, and we've got to stop it. If not, it's going to be a huge problem for us in the future because we don't know who's coming to this country, and, and we, we have no control. Well, the White House did announce that President Biden, the second week of January, will be going to Mexico City. Of course, he's going to fly over the border again. He hasn't been to the border in his 50-plus <laughs> yeah. years in, in Washington, D.C. Absolutely more amazing. But I remember hearing Brandon Judd of the Border Patrol Council talking about the strategy of the cartels. They don't have these people go to the ports of entry, which would be the legal way to do it. They go between the ports of entry, right. suck in all the resources, that way creating open corridors so they can move the drugs, move the human trafficking, do the types of nefarious things that they want to be doing. So how do we defend against that when the White House is out there arguing, literally in court, that Title 42... It, they have no justification to keep it in place. They could keep it in place. They could do an executive order. They could pass it. They could have put it in the omnibus, but they chose yeah. not to. They're taking away another tool that we have to secure that border. Yeah, there's two parts to this. One, if, you, if you're worried about securing the border, by the, you've already lost the fight because that's your last line of defense in the coming across. That's the reason with President Trump we looked forward. And we basically told the Mexicans, told Obrador at the time, look, we're going to target the cartels because not only are they bringing drugs across, they're even involved in human trafficking. And there were actually comments being made. Actually, the former uh, Secretary of Defense, Mark Esper, made a comment, well, the president actually talked about targeting militarily the cartels. Yeah, we did, because President Trump said, if we're going to have to take some executive action, some type of hard action, and he told Obrador, if you can't control it, we're going to help you control it, or we're going to control it ourselves. It's a harsh thing to say, but otherwise, we've just overwhelmed our community. So when, when they come across the border right now, Jason, we've actually lost that fight, because by that time, it's hit the local communities, and they're just not adapted, not prepared to, to take the influx, both on the criminals that are coming across and just the refugees themselves. Well, I could talk about this for hours, but it's so fundamentally wrong. Another mm -hmm. subject, though, I want to talk to you about uh, has to do with Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, President Zelensky came before yeah. Congress. There's $45 billion plus dollars in addition to what was previously out there yeah. and a Patriot battery that is going to be uh, there in Ukraine. What will that do to help secure the fight for the Ukrainians? Yeah, it, this is a great question, Jason. Look, whether we like it or not, they're complaining about it. We just need to stop that. Look, that train has left the station. We are a proxy to this war. And the sooner the president tells the American people that, makes everybody realize it, then it's going to be better for everybody. Because the only place we're heading to in Ukraine and supporting Ukrainians right now is it's either going to be negotiation or Russian defeat. And they're not going to, going to negotiate. So we have to put ourselves on a path. And we need to tell the Russians that we're going to head towards a military defeat of Russian forces in Ukraine. And what Biden needs to do, and he has not done it, he needs to pick up the phone. And he talks about personal diplomacy all the time. And this is what President Trump would have done. You pick up the phone and you call 
uh, Putin. And you say, this is what we are going to do. We are going to provide enough military support for the Ukrainians to defeat the Russian army in the field. We'll have them leave Ukraine. You've got two options. Either have a military defeat of the Russian army or you negotiate. You know, he'll, Putin is a historian. He'll think back, boy, this kind of happened in 1917 with Tsar Nicholas II when the Russian army mutinied. But they can be defeated right now because the Russian army is badly, badly hurt. They've lost their frontline units. They've lost a considerable amount of their, yeah. their equipment out there. They're now refurbishing T-62 tanks. They haven't been used since 1975. So we need to apply that pressure. The yeah. president needs to apply that pressure. And the American people need to realize we are into a fight, whether we like it or not, as a proxy to this war. Yeah, this is a time we need somebody like a Ronald Reagan in peace through strength. And if you don't have that strength and mm -hmm. they, uh, the other side doesn't believe you, yeah. It's, uh, it's hard to negotiate. Uh, retired Lieutenant General Keith Kellogg, Merry Christmas to you and your family, and especially your grandkids. You can get back to them now. Thanks for joining us on Sunday Morning Futures. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.